One of the first things people often think about when starting a new project is what language do I want to use? If you're like most of the US population, it's probably JavaScript or Python. But what if I told you that you could use more than one language? Well, there's actually a few ways to handle that, but today we're going to talk about one of them, foreign function interfaces. Foreign function interfaces, or FFI, allow you to interface with code written in another language. For example, your application might be written in JavaScript and is running on something like Bun, but you'd like to make use of some Rust code that you've, you've found. Well, you're able to modify or wrap the Rust code to expose a foreign function interface and then compile that either as a statically linked library or a dynamically linked library. Today, I'll show you how to compile out a dynamically linked library from Rust code and then use that in your TypeScript application running on Bun. That being said, even if you don't use these tools, you can still leverage foreign function interfaces and a plethora of other languages too. So the idea should still be relevant even if you're working with something like Python or Java. Let's take a look at some code. Okay, so I have an empty index.ts and again, this is gonna run on bun. So we'll leverage some bun primitives. I also have an empty Rust file. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of code to our Rust file. We have a function here that checks if a number is prime. We have a function here called cycle, which is going to cycle two numbers for us. And finally, we're gonna check if the uh, number we provide is a circular prime. So this is a, a algorithm for determining if a prime is a circular prime. Um, two important things. If from the Rust side, you'll notice that this is just a function, but this is a public external C-like function. So there's a couple different foreign function interfaces. The C-like foreign function interface is the most common. Uh, most things that are supporting foreign function interfaces support C-like. So in our case, we wanna make this external to the crate that we're working with. And if you're not super familiar with crates or any of the Rust concepts, don't worry too much. Um, these are things you can learn on your own and you might not even be using Rust. You might choose to use a language like Zig or C++ that can do foreign function interfacing as well. Um, and then we also need to specify here that to the compiler, we're gonna say, don't mangle this function. Okay, so don't worry too much about the logic. It's more about how it all fits together. Notice this is called primes.rs. So if I go to my terminal and I type Rust C crate type C D Y L I B C style dynamic library, and then the file that I want to compile, primes.rs, it will execute and it will create a lib primes.dlib. Uh, we can't open this in VS Code because it's a binary formatting um, and it would not really render into anything meaningful, but it's here and that's what's important. Now that we have our dynamically linked library, we can go back to our index.ts in our TypeScript code. And again, this is using bun, so if you choose to use something like node, the interfaces may change. But we can import DL open, FFI type, and suffix from bun foreign function interface, FFI. And then we have our path. In our case, it's lib primes and then the suffix that we get from uh, bun FFI. Now we can go ahead and open that using DL open. We pass in the path. And then we have to identify the symbols that are contained inside of this. I haven't found a better way to do this dynamically. I'm not sure if there is, but basically we're saying, hey, this path, when I open it, is going to expose this function, this foreign function. And then we have to tell it a little bit of metadata about that foreign function. So for example, our args are FFI type U32, so an unsigned 32-bit integer. This is more of a Rust thing than a TypeScript thing, but it's important to know that the data you're sending over might change types. And it returns a foreign function interface type of Boolean. Okay, now that we have that, we can actually call it. So we can do a console log lib symbols is circular prime one, and this is not a circular prime, so let's also add one that is a circular prime. So we'll choose the number 193,939. Now that we have both pieces of the puzzle put together, we can save our files, and then we can come back to our terminal and bun run index.ts. You'll notice that the first one is false because that's a one and it's not a cir circular prime. Uh, and the second one is true because it is a circular prime. So why would you wanna do this? 
Ultimately, using foreign function interfaces can help us prevent duplicate code, prevent us from reinventing the wheel, and allow us to offload CPU-intensive processes to a language that was designed to be blazingly fast, like Rust, or Zig, or C. You have a lot of options. However, there is a cost, too. Linking in an external library creates overhead, and if you choose to maintain both the Rust piece and the TypeScript piece of this implementation, you'll want to have a firm understanding of both languages. This can be a difficult ask for teams whose skill sets tend to be specialized around specific technology, especially like web dev. That being said, there's nothing that says you can't build the entire core of your product offering in a tool like Rust with a few teams which employ Rust specialists and then ship that as a dynamic or static library and allow other teams to hook into that. This is actually similar to what 1Password does, but I believe they're using WebAssembly as the middleman for interoperability and not foreign function interfaces. That's it. Hopefully in this short video, you were able to learn something about foreign function interfaces and why they might be useful and kind of how they work. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks and have a great day.